Hello everyone, welcome back to daily news editorial. Today I have taken up a topic from the Indian Express that basically um, t uh, talks about the recent National Research Foundation bill and the National Research Foundation that uh, how it is going to help in enhancing India's research and development sector. So we will know about the NRF its key missions and the current and way forward uh, thing about research and development in India. So let's get started. So the union cabinet recently cleared a bill enabling the setting up of the national research foundation that is to be placed in parliament in the monsoon session. The announcement has been welcomed by researchers and academics who have been waiting to see the promised increase in uh, research and development sp um, spends by the government. So at this juncture, it is very useful to remind ourselves of the promise of the AR, uh, NRF described in detail in the draft NEP 2019 as well as in the detailed project report uh, 2019. So NRF is founded on the belief that the advancement of human well-being human well-being and progress relies on the creation of new scientific and social knowledge So it emphasizes a very uh, a verifiable and methodological assessment of the idea of truth. It aims to foster a culture of free inquiry, mentorship and support within India's universities and institutions of higher education and research. So as enunciated by the National Science Foundation of the US. There is no single factor more important to the intellectual, social and economic progress of a nation and uh, to the enhanced well-being of its citizens than the continuous creation and acquisition of new knowledge. The NRF would aim to become a major driver of that progress for India, helping to grow the nation's economy, so, uh, economy sustainably, enhance its security. Uh, promote well-being and societal progress and help cement India's position as a global leader. So broadly the NRF has uh, three key missions. One is capacity building at universities and colleges. Second one is um, growing and nurturing excellence in cutting edge research across disciplines. And third one is supporting research for societal impact. So these missions will require not just substantial monetary investment but also the trained human resources to enable the optimal use of monetary resources and an efficient and flexible governance model. The NRF will fund competitive peer reviewed grant proposals to individuals or groups across all disciplines and institutions. It will help seed, grow and facilitate research at academic institutions, particularly at universities and colleges where research capacity and infrastructure is currently in a nascent stage. So doctoral and postdoctoral programs will be instituted, uh, centers of excellence will be set up in universities and there will be funding for creating shared infrastructure. The second key mission uh, is for India to recognize, foresee and promote cutting edge research across disciplines through building capacity and leadership at scale. The NRF will increase India's role and participation in key areas of national and global importance and in major national and international collaborations through large scale mission projects and mega projects. Well obviously because it will help India in participating uh, in so many sectors where, uh, which will help 
in in uh, india in growing in the global platform and this can be done by collaborations via multiple projects right which are at the global level so the nrf will uh, recommend and support activities and initiatives for increasing the part participation of women and other under uh, represented groups in research and recognize outstanding research with awards and national seminars so there has to be some kind of incentive as well because participation otherwise won't happen and uh, incentive not in the sense of monetary incentive but there should be some kind of recognition or awards for people who participate or uh, women who participate especially the under represented uh, groups uh, in research correct so uh, it will uh, liaise the liaise and uh, coordinate with researchers uh, relevant central and state government bodies and industry partners so that so that researchers remain connected with each other and with potential collaborators so this will help policy makers uh, keep abreast of the latest uh, research breakthroughs and bring them into the policy or implementation domains so this basically means that every i mean it has to be connected right everybody has to stay in connection so that everyone is at consensus that there is some key uh, let's say innovation in the research area and everybody has to come together to know about this so that policy makers can also be uh, intimidated about this and they can implement this in the in their decision making correct and this particular innovation will also help with sustainability will also help um, like i said in human well being and progress now there is one major concern uh, that came up when the discussions were held between all the stakeholders in designing the nrf chapter in the draft nep and the uh dpr that is the detailed project report so there should be ease of doing research in india free of bureaucratic restrictions and ill conceived financial policies the nrf will bring out enlightened policies and procedures for funding while maintaining accountability now the detailed project report outlines an administrative structure for the nrf that is modern professional and flexible one that will enable to it to deliver on its stated mission of uplifting research in the university system supporting cutting edge research and providing linkages between academia uh, industry and government so the uh, detailed project report it outlines an administrative process this is to maintain accountability so the government uh, the uh, governance structure proposed in the dpr envisages a board of governors consisting of 20 to 25 eminent researchers educators and professionals led by a president a vice president and a coo now given that the uh, national science foundation uh if if i'm correct it is national yeah national science foundation of the us has in its 70 plus years of existence become the gold standard for open research funding and management in the world the nrf was modeled after the same concept and it was intended to have 10 research direct, uh, directorates covering broad disciplinary areas such as the natural sciences mathematics engineering then is environmental and earth sciences social sciences arts and humanities 
health and agriculture. So, these are the ones. The directorates are envisioned to have their own chairpersons, program officers and staff who will enable smooth functioning of the end to end process and it calls for funding proposals, uh, peer reviews, oversight and management of ongoing research including mentorship and assistance to researchers from universities and colleges as needed and reporting and accountability related processes. So, the NRF was basically conceived uh, to be an autonomous institution that would be managed by the collective leadership and experience of its board of governors, expert researchers uh, drawn from the various disciplines that the foundation would fund headed by the president of the board selected from among the board members. The board would actually steer the direction of the NRF on the basis of inputs from all stakeholders and report to the prime minister. So, the president of the board along with the vice president and COO through their offices uh, would be accountable to the funding agencies and to the government. Now, many of the leading research uh, producing nations have multiple public and private funding agencies and India would benefit from the same. The mandate of the NRF is distinctly different from all these agencies and will be critical in building quality research capacity. So, the main mission is to build quality research capacity. This is the main motto of this entire NRF thing. So, with regard to funding, government uh, support to the NRF will uh, come as a block grant without delineating the subheads of research support into human resources, consumables and capital. Uh, in the DPR, it was proposed that the NRF will be given an annual grant that will eventually aim to uh, reach at least 0.1 percent of GDP. GDP. So, the heads will be uh, delineated by the divisions within the uh, NRF as appropriate to each field and specific projects. The board will have full flexibility in determining if and how funds can move between heads. The foundation will be fully empowered administratively and financially so that it does not face hurdles in funding good projects. So, basically the red tapeism thing is uh, removed in this case. So, it is up to the uh, in, in the entire foundation that will be fully empowered and all the administrative and financial powers is vested, vest, are vested with the foundation. So, given the immense breadth of research and expertise that will be needed across the various disciplines for carrying out the extensive mandate of the NRF and the sheer number of experts that will need to be involved to execute these responsibilities. Um, now, th it remains to be seen how the combination of the board and the executive council as mentioned in the recent bill will be supplemented with an uh, appropriate structure that can undertake a gargantuan challenge meaning a great challenge. Now, in, under the bill what was suggested was um, the establishment of the foundation. So, it is uh, the, the basic one of the primary functions would includes advanced collaborations among the industry, academia and government departments and research institutions with the aim to create an interface mechanism with science as the pivotal for participation and contribution of uh, industries and state governments in addition to the scientific and line ministries. Also under the bill, the department of science and technology will be the administrative department of NRF, now which will be governed by a governing board that I just said consisting of eminent researchers and professionals. So, the NRF's uh, functioning will be governed by an executive council chaired by the principal scientific advisor to the government of India. 
the bill will repeal the science and engineering research board so this will be replaced actually it will be uh, repealed and uh, it was established by an act of parliament in 2008 and this will be subsumed into the nrf so the nrf will correct the problem of unequitable research funding and will bring in private sector investment to research infrastructure and building train manpower so scientific research is the hallmark of any nation's growth and instills scientific temper in the minds of the people now according to india brand equity foundation india has a large network of science and technology institutions and trained manpower now it has the third largest scientific and technical manpower in the world so with large network of science and technology institutions india is the third largest scientific and technical manpower in the world and ranks top in the field of basic research so from making powerful weather forecasting computers pratyush and meher to entering in the ranks of top countries with research uh, prowess india portrays huge potential for research outlook amongst its population the establishment of nrf is the need of the hour as in spite of having immense potential such innovations and research remain untapped and marred due to lack of funding so it is expected that the nrf will strengthen funding and streamline the culture of research and innovation in india's universities colleges research institutions and research and development laboratories so this is all about today's article and to before winding up i uh, will post a mains question like i always do evaluate the impact of government funding and grants on research and development outcomes in india how can the allocation and utilization of research funds be optimized to maximize the societal and economic benefit you can write this answer in 250 words so that is it for today folks i hope you like the video and thank you for watching tomorrow i'll come and uh, not tomorrow exactly but monday i'll come up with uh, another editorial so if you want to stay updated with such videos and uh, hot topics do subscribe to our channel the link to which has been provided in the description box so till then take care